So welcome back to the to this uh, AED Careers Day for the afternoon sessions. Uh, as uh, as I mentioned, uh, these uh, afternoon sessions will be focused on the Portuguese uh, companies and uh, to show everyone what uh, what type of projects we are involved in and what 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 we do. And so we will have the first workshop. We will be focused on the space industry. We have four uh, guest speakers that will show us a little bit the projects that they are involved and the opportunities that they have for um, for everyone. So uh, let me introduce. Uh, we have uh, Ivo Vieira, which is the CEO from Luzo Space. Thank you, Ivo, for accepting the invitation. We have Bruno de Carvalho, which is the managing director at D-Orbit Portugal. Thank you, Bruno. We have Elder Silva, which is the head of space software at Edisoft. And finally, uh, uh, Francisco Cunha, CEO of Geosat, is running a little bit late, but he will join us uh, in a couple of minutes. So uh, the, 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 I will give the, the floor to, to Elder. I mean, the, the important thing is to hear from our speakers, hear the interesting things they are doing. And so please, Elder, go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pui. So I will start to share my screen. So uh, at Edisoft, so currently at Edisoft, we are around 120 people and we work in four different areas. Uh, from naval, naval systems, uh, we are the prime uh, technology integrator of uh, NPOs uh, from the, the Navy. We also work in secure communications information systems. We are where we work internally in Portugal and also in Angola in uh, secure systems for, for government. Uh, we have the airspace uh, mobility solutions where we have a product uh, that is a top sky tower uh, that uh, manage the airports uh, and the tower and the airports, uh, which we uh, provide for all over the, the world. And finally, the space system, so the, the section that, that I belong, uh, where we are dedicated to space. In terms of premises, uh, we are in three different locations in Portugal, uh, in Oeiras, in, in this uh, uh, region, also in Viana do Castelo, in the shipyard, and also in the teleport in Santa Maria in Açores. In terms of what we do, this is... Uh, uh, image that more or less show what uh, what we produce. So on the bottom right, you can see all the projects that we have been major projects that we have been involved with ESA, which include the Galileo projects that we worked from 2000, uh, the Agnos that was uh, uh, also a, a satellite um, uh, from 2001, and RS uh, also another satellite to, to relay the communications. The Galileo sensor station that is located in our uh, teleport in the storage. And finally, we start to work with ESAC in 2017 and 19. Okay. In terms of uh, launches, you can see here uh, some of the launches that we are following with our station in a source uh, from uh, crew. And finally, on the top, uh, it is a real-time operating system that we are developing since 2006. Uh, it, it was developed as, as critically level B, and it is provided for a, a lot of missions. Uh, not only in Europe, you can see, for example, the GOC-33, that is a Turkish um, satellite that is using the operating system. We have the CompSat 6, 7, and 7, 8 from South Korea. The first satellite that we worked it was the Sentinel-2. Uh, then we, we enter in the small GEO, that is a communication satellite for geostationary geo, geo, geo orbit. And uh, the Galileo Fox, uh, currently the 22 uh, Galileo Fox satellites uh, are shipped with our operating system, the Euclid, that is a, a satellite to analyze the dark matter in the, in the, in the universe. Uh, we have meteorological satellites like MTG uh, vehicles, that is the experimental vehicle that you, you can also see. And with this operating system, we, we were able 
to start participating with the development of the, uh, the satellites. We have the sale that we start to provide the real-time operating system, and then we were invited to do the ground support uh, equipment to test the satellite. And finally, when the satellite was launched to space, we were invited to uh, adapt the, that system uh, for uh, operations. And finally, uh, we have the BDM that is not a satellite, it's a coupling, um, coupling device uh, original for, uh, to be used from the Dream Chaser to the International Space Station and currently is being thought uh, to, to, to be uh, provided to the Lunar Station. I apologize. In terms of uh, our team's improvement, uh, so space is uh, nice to work, but it has also some boring things. Um, so the operating system, for example, for you to have an idea, it's around 12,000 uh, lines of code. Uh, and for that, we, we develop a, a test suite that is six times the, the operating system. For example, in terms of documentation, we provide 32 documents, which mean more or less that we have one page of the documentation for each line of code. So it is quite a, a, a big work to, to do it. So how it is, it is important. It is important because it is provided as open source for all the, all the users and all the users of the operating system. It is provided with complete documentation. So uh, from the development assurance level B, that is, it, it was used for the qualification uh, using the Galileo software standard, we are obliged to have an understatement uh, coverage and also decision coverage. It is comes from, from the standard. And on the right, you can see a not updated version of the satellites and missions that we are we are involved. For example, it is missing here uh, since uh, since one or two months ago the, the Space Rider, also three three satellites from the Tal Zalenius space, and also uh, Aldrich, I believe, it is missing. Uh, in terms of ESAIL, that was a project that we entered as provider of the real-time operating system. Then they invited us to do the electrical ground support equipment for testing the, the satellite as, as all the components, then the integration of the components, and finally the complete uh, satellite. You can see on the, on the left, two of the four racks that, uh, that with the material that we have used for, for, for the test of satellite. And on the bottom, uh, right, you can see a little bit the architecture of the EGSE. Okay, then as I already told you, uh, we were invited to adapt that system for the operations of the satellite after the launch of it. DBDM, so it is a coupling system that it is intended to use. It was used. Uh, it, it was intended to use. Uh, for the coupling of the International Space Station with the Dream Chaser. Uh, we also provide the real-time operating system, and then we were invited to do independent software verification and validation of the software that, that they, they produced for this device. Uh, it was more than that, because afterwards, we were also, also invited uh, with a different team uh, to uh, perform a part of the software of, of, of this device. And currently, we are thinking about doing other things. So the Comp CompSat-6, that is a South Korean satellite, we also had the same approach. We entered with our team's uh, improvement for, for the satellite. And then we were invited to do some training to, to the, the persons from South Korea. And uh, after a successful training, we were invited to do the two things in, uh, in, the, in the, the satellite. It was the bootloader of, of bootloader the stage one of the, the satellite. So it is the first software that uh, boots that starts after you power on the, the, the satellite. And after we also were invited to, to do um, an application that patches the software uh, on board. So the satellite is in space and uh, usually the satellites have two different versions of the software. And uh, the intention of this application is to replace one of the, the images of the, the, the software uh, and uh, reboot and start to using that new, new version. So we have done that for this 
uh, satellite. And finally, uh, the Aeros, that is um, a nanosatellite constellation that we are building. We are building with a lot of partners in Portugal, with SAIA, Spinworks, DS Telecom, uh, Collab, also um, a bunch of universities like Uni Uni Universidade de Algarve, do Porto, Minho and Technico, with the support of MIT in Massachusetts, with Air Center and the EMAR in the Soros. So the intention uh, it is to, to provide a constellation of satellites, but first, the first one, uh, uh, the, the, the idea is to analyze the, the oceans. So to analyze the ocean fronts and fauna location, and also to um, collect some uh, superficial um, conditions. So the color of the, 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 the surface. So, and for that, we are providing three uh, payloads for, for the satellite, the deep spectral camera, the software defined radio, and the GNSSSR. Okay. And here you can find a little bit uh, the, the specifications of the, the Aeros. So it is a 3U uh, satellite, as you can see on the top right, you can see a CAD model of, of the satellite. Uh, it is 10 by 10 by 30 centimeters with around five kilos. We will launch for an, or an orbit of 420 kilometers. Uh, the orbital period will be around 90 minutes. Our interest, uh, it is to analyze uh, with one satellite, is, it is to analyze uh, the Portugal and the near region of Portugal. And as I already told you, we are using uh, three payloads, the IPEX spectral camera, the software defined radio that can be readapted uh, to communicate with different devices on Earth, and finally the GNSSR. And thank you very much. Excellent, Elas. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it was I'm a very comprehensive description. I mean, a lot of things and much, uh, a lot of focus on uh, software for sure, but also a little bit on the hardware, either flying, either for support. Um, and of course, it's Aeros, which is a very ambitious project uh, with a large collaboration. So let's see, let's move on to, to the next one. Then I will surely come back to you with a couple of questions or from the audience. If in the meanwhile, something pops up. So thank you, Elder. So I move on to uh, Ivo Vieira, which is the CEO at Luso Space, with whom I've had the pleasure of working for, for uh, three or four years. So I know how interesting the company is, but it has grown a lot uh, since my time there. So for sure you have new and exciting things to, to show also to me. So please, Ivo, go ahead. Thank you very, very much, Rui. Um, so I will share my screen. I think it's working. So thank you very much for this opportunity to, to present a little about Luso Space. Um, so Luso Space is a space company, a Portuguese space company, as the name uh, indicates. We are 19 years old, so next year we will be 20 years old, which is quite uh, interesting. Um, we have been working in more than 30 space mission, missions and more than 30 space hardware has been delivered. Um, those are the missions where we have been flying from probably two Aeolus, Sentinel, several of them. Um, and we are still uh, 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 waiting for other equipment to, to, to fly. Um, main skills are OCS, magnetometers and magnetorques. So those are navigation systems, photonics, uh, lasers, uh, telescopes, electronics. Uh, mechanical systems and also some software, mainly FPGA and augmented reality. So we have about 800 square meters of office, about 300 square meters of a lab space. And we have two clean rooms. One is ISO 5, which is very demanding. Uh, and then we have a larger one, 100 square meters uh, ISO, ISO 7 uh, clean room. Um, we have electronics lab, optics labs, a testing room and uh, some equipments for uh, environmental testing. We are based in Lisbon, in Portugal. Uh, we have another branch in, in Samora Correia, which is more for the augmented, augmented reality um, uh, field. And we are developing an, uh, a branch also in Denmark. 
in terms of products, Magnetometer is the oldest one. It's, it's a navigation system for the for the orientation of uh, the satellites, the uh, the attitude, um, and it has been flying in in several uh, missions. Only for you to know, this is the normally this is the first equipment that is used used uh, just after the um, the launch of the spacecraft. So it's a critical equipment because it will help. It will support the satellites to stabilize it and to be sure that uh, the attitude will be as necessary as needed for uh, for pointing the solar panels and the antennas for the communications. Then we 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 are uh, finishing the development of a magnet torker. This will uh, this is the opposite of the magnetometer. The magnetometer measures the magnetic field, and the magnet torker creates a magnetic field in order to create a, a, a torque uh, over the satellite. This is a very state-of-the-art equipment, uh, a laser head for optical space communications, uh, free space. So we, are, we developed this with the Thales Alenia Space. Uh, the idea is to have a, a, an equipment that will allow the communication between the satellite and ground stations. This is for LEO spacecraft. Um, and uh, it will fly, hopefully, in December this year. Let's let's see if it, it will fly, and we if, if we don't have further delays. Then we have also uh, been working on payload and subsystems. Um, amazing payloads! This is the most fantastic payload that we have been working. A high power laser for the LISA mission. Uh, the LISA mission is trying to measure the the gravitational waves that have been predicted by Einstein. And this mission that will be launched in 2030 or 2032 requires a laser. This is the core of the, of the mission because the laser will do an interferometry between three satellites that will be, uh, 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 that, that will have a distance between them of around 5 million kilometers. And the, the, the laser needs to measure the difference of, of uh, distance between these two satellites with one Armstrong of, of, uh, of precision, which is really very, very small. So in order to be able to have this kind of laser, we need to develop a very stable, very stable uh, laser in terms of power and frequency. So this is really state, state of the art. Uh, we have been developing an, an, an engineering model uh, that has been tested last year. And now we are working on the qualification of the photonics components. Uh, this is a, a very uh, interesting mission because I think this will be the, the farthest mission that Portugal is working on. There are also other companies working on, on JUICE. And so we delivered a very large composite structure with a magne magnetic coil inside because uh, JUICE's uh, magnet magnetic field is quite strong. And so this uh, magnetic uh, coil will be uh, used to to, the to proceed to the demagnetization of the satellite. We have been working also on ground systems, not only on, on flight hardware. Um, this is a very big project, uh, uh, optical ground support equipment for Sentinel-5 telescope. So we developed a, a, a many instruments in order to test the satellite, this, this is the biggest space hardware uh, project, uh, as far as we know, in, in Portugal. Uh, hopefully, it will not, not be with this uh, new constellation that will come, hopefully, also. Um, and also, we have been working on augmented reality um, for the assembly of satellites. We tested it uh, in OHB uh, clean room uh, during the assembly of a satellite. So we developed a software and that projects uh, information for the for the technician. It projects uh, procedures, drawings. Um, in this example, the, this guy is is, uh, is seeing, is watching a set of cables for the harness, and so he knows exactly where he can put the 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 the, the cables, and so it's more efficient and uh, it's more reliable in order to to assemble the satellite. We have been working also in technology transfer for non-space applications. Um, iSpeak was one of the products we developed for the health sector. 
Uh, this is a, an augmented reality system for people like uh, Stephen Hawkins. It projects uh, a, a, a virtual keyboard, and then you have a high tracking device that will allow you to control the mouse with your eyes. And so you can select some keys, and then the system can translate this in a synthetic uh, voice that will allow you to speak with other people. Um, we have been working also with DHL uh, for also using augmented reality for logistics. This is a project that it's uh, running now. Uh, hopefully, we'll have good results. And this is the most uh, ambitious, uh, for sure, uh, project of uh, Loser Space, uh, which is a Haidu. Uh, we are developing very elegant um, uh, smart glasses with a very large, wide field of view. We have been talking with Facebook, Google, Samsung, LG, Sony, among others. They are very interested in this technology, so we are uh, improving, it, improving it. And this could be a very uh, new product, not in space, but also it can be used by astronauts. Actually, we began to, to, develop, to develop this technology with astronauts. But this is really for the consumer market. And these, these are good examples of how uh, space technologies can be applied to other non-space uh, sectors. Finally, uh, we are now we have now this ambition to work also in satellites. Uh, we are now uh, running a study, uh, which is Aton, um, a, a study about uh, uh, developing a, a constellation of satellites. Uh, what means Aton? Uh, Aton is Atlantic because it's focused over the Atlantic, but of course not only. Observation, because we are talking about remote sensing and network, because our target is to have 16 satellites so that we can have a very low revisit time. So thank you very much. Um, I'll leave you my, 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 the address of the human resource if you want to know more about us and if you, you would like to do some kind of training or apply for some job. So please do it. Uh, we are open to know more about you. And thank you very much. Thank you, Yves, for your excellent uh, presentation. I think we are now having, uh, while the Edisoft was uh, clear, more so uh, focus on software, you know, uh, lose our space focus more on hardware, either support, uh, either flight hardware. Uh, and also we can see that uh, we are moving with, so we're having solutions from uh, upstream, midstream, and getting to the, to the downstream. And we are not, I mean, this miniaturization, these micro satellites, mini satellites, micro launchers, I think is also is showing that it opened the door to some very interesting things. And now we are not only talking about systems at this moment, at, this, at, at the national context, we are talking about uh, satellites, so, which is uh, very exciting for sure. So, and of course, this, this good example of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of transversal opportunities, right? Picking this technology and applying to other sectors, which of course creates also a, a broad range of opportunities. And that is clearly one of the objectives also of all the investment in the space sector, which is high-end technology that then can be used and transformed to many other industry sectors. And so that is clearly something that everyone should also be, be taken into account. So thank you, Ivo. Uh, we'll get back to you. I will uh, now uh, go to Bruno Carvalho, the general manager at the Orbit Orbital, which I know has already also a very interesting projects uh, to show you. Bruno. Hey, thank you for the invitation. I hope you can see my screen now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Rui, for, for the presentation. Thank you for the invitation. Um, the Orbit, the Orbit is, a, is a space logistics company, and I'll go into that in a minute. Just trying to, to reframe this because we, we had a, a kind of a busy day. We had some, some round tables, very interesting um, uh, setup, uh, which I think works really well. Um, and it's not necessarily easy to navigate through the, through the, through the, um, the platform, but the roundtables I think worked worked quite well, and I think um, um, I mean we 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 pleased to how the the days have been going, and uh, congratulations for the for the work the AD has been putting together. Um, so the orbit is a, a as I said a, a space space logistics company. What does that what does that mean? I mean the 
the the company's um, founders uh, in Italy, so Luke and, and Renato, uh, they had an idea about um, uh, uh, how to remove satellite debris. And the debris is becoming a problem. It's becoming a, a, a an issue. I, I think it's it's uh, starting to even appear on the news um, that uh, uh, we have. Uh, orbits that are being congested, particularly in low, low Earth orbit, the, the sun synchronous, the, 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 the some of the polar uh, useful orbits for, for Earth observation are becoming crowded, as well as some um, low inclination for, for telecoms. So we have constellations being launched of about thousands of satellites, like Starlink, the constellation of a dozen satellites uh, that uh, can also pose problems. So um, at the origin of the orbit is the concept of a, a deorbiting device. So basically something that to, is installed on, on your satellite um, before it's launched so that you can basically safely deorbit, uh, and hence the name, um, and, and, uh, and re-enter the atmosphere and, and, and clear the path to, to, uh, to the other satellites. On, on, a, on the back of that device, which um, is still in our portfolio, it's still in our catalog, it's actually one of the many off-the-shelf components that we have and that we developed. Um, and it's developed across both, um, all the, not both, just both Italy and Portugal because we have more locations. Um, at the end. It's, a, it's developed across the, the, the different locations that the orbit has. So all of, the, all of these things that you're gonna see here that I'm gonna show you, they are developed in a, in a multinational team uh, operating in Italy, um, United Kingdom and Portugal. Uh, the orbit is in Portugal since 2014. Um, actually, on the back of a, of a, of a contest uh, sponsored by Caixa Capital and MIT, MIT Portugal, um, precisely with the device I just uh, I just um, I just mentioned. And what um, and until recently, actually, Caixa Capital was part of the the orbit's uh, um, share structure, so they were they were investors. Um, Coming back to kind of coming back to the topic, so so the engineering team is, is transversal. So we we work with uh, uh, horizontal uh, um, teams across the different countries. Uh, so we have people with different skill sets uh, uh, in Portugal as well as in Italy as well as in the UK. These typically complement uh, each other, but we are not uh, bounded by uh, um, a frontier, as so so to speak. Uh, so we have satellite operators in Portugal currently operating our satellites that are in orbit. So the iron satellite that you just seen in the picture, which is basically, this is number two there, uh, on, on the back of uh, uh, Transporter 1, um, Falcon 9's um, record-breaking uh, launch uh, of 143 satellites. So the orbit has Iron uh, on inside Iron, there's, there's uh, there was um, eight more satellites um, and some hosted payload. So what it what is um, in orbit logistics? In orbit logistics is basically um, delivering in orbit the capability that is required to be delivered. Be them your instruments, be them um, uh, capability like uh, um, processing power, um, like um, communication relay, um, but also bringing your, your satellites into orbit, delivering them into your correct orbital slot um, and making sure that you can start your, your operations much, much faster, much quicker. So this is basically a screenshot of uh, a, a augmented part of, of Iron. So this, these are the cameras that actually uh, are installed. So we have um, actually Drago. So this is infrared sensor for the island of Canarias. The, which is actually taking some very interesting pictures of the volcano these days. Um, there's a, there's a Drago, which is um, uh, uh, hyperspectral uh, camera, and we also have at the end of the uh, the life uh, uh, of the satellite uh, uh, another payload that we plan to 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 test, which is a drag sail um, developed by. Uh, HPS in, in Germany to, to, to help out with the, uh, the the orbiting mechanism. So there are several techniques for the orbiting devices, and uh, we're going to test another, just yet another one. Um, we also have on board of this iron uh, capabilities to, um, to do some processing power, so with computers, um, which have been testing uh, the downlink of data in space from other satellites and processing that and generating alerts and, and uh, uh, adding to the information 
before it's actually download, downloaded uh, into the ground. So ions capabilities that I showed in the previous video, and I'm diverging a bit, so I'll be happy to discuss and have questions after this. But it's basically what we're trying to do is that this is a picture of uh, satellites and basically launched all at the same time. Uh, on the uh, actually these on on a, on 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 a Vega in September uh, 2020, uh, so Planet uh, has a flock of satellites that were delivered by our by by our Ion here in red, uh, and there's another set of satellites that were delivered by by Vega and were just released um, by the launch provider uh, on the same day, same flight, uh, and you can see the difference how it is spread across the orbital plane. And the difference here is that not only you can have your constellation spread out across your orbital plane, you can also uh, have some shape, uh, phase shifting um, with ion. You can also raise their orbits. You can also e even change their inclination plane. It's a, it's a very intensive uh, maneuver from an energy, energy perspective, but it is possible. So we did that for Swarm um, on a follow-up mission um where they had an inclination uh, deviation of uh, almost one degree which is quite massive um but all of that needs to be controlled so the focus of the portuguese team has been from the recent perspective the control of the satellite as i said we do satellite operations we can actually do the do those operations uh remotely so basically our software is is developed um to to do to be delivered in a in a cloud environment which makes it um not just more reliable but in, in, in uh from a business perspective in terms of the costs that uh, um, uh you would have to maintain to scale your uh software it it makes a lot more sense to to deliver it in the cloud so we don't have to buy computers ourselves we don't have to maintain that network it's not our expertise and we don't want to um to do it so we offload all of that to uh, the Amazons of this world. They, we work a lot with AWS. We actually one of their first partners to, to, to use their ground stations and uh, uh, use that connectivity. So we are actually using ground stations from Australia to South, South Korea, Alaska, um, Azores. Uh, we're actually using um, leaf space in the Azores and Ireland and others. Um, and we have, because we have our own fleet, but also because we provide these services to our customers, we, we have to have global coverage for, for, our, for, our, uh, for our satellites. Um, we're thinking ahead. Uh, I'll show you some, some sci-fi images in a, bit, in a minute, but first the real stuff. So this is the deployment of uh, one of the flock uh, uh, ion sat uh, planet satellites that was delivered by ion in, uh, in September. So that one of those red dots that you've seen in the previous picture. Um, I have some videos that I'm not going to show. I don't have the time, otherwise you will kill me. But uh, this is also um, an interesting picture. We normally see this uh, upside down, a different angle, but it's the Iberian Peninsula ticket last week or a couple of weeks ago. Um, so you, for those who are part of north of north of Peninsula, you have all the uh, the fog uh, that was uh, that was happening with while everybody else was with 42 degrees uh, Celsius. So. Uh, that's the, uh, as I said, the, a very recent picture. Um, so, coming back and centering, this is this is what we're doing as a company. And um, I, I don't really like, and I was I was prepared to have to ask some difficult questions. Who uh, who said that it was not the photo, appropriate forum? But I still I still make a couple of remarks. One is that uh, the orbit is not a Portuguese company, but it's also not an Italian company. It's also not a UK company or even a US company. The orbit is a global company and we operate across the market globally. Space is a global market and we do thrive to, to be in that market. Um, so in order for us to be successful, the, the, the market is not Portugal, it's not Europe, it's global. And, and it needs to be global. Otherwise, uh, we may win the race, but you know what's, what's after that? We need to be sustainable and we need to make the, the business case sustainable. So we're looking at the capabilities that we have. Um, and this is the capabilities we have today. This is already either flying or in, about to fly. So these are things that have already been demonstrated. So the fast dispersion, phasing, orbit raising, plane change. But this is basically the capabilities of having a, a, a taxi system in orbit. And this is already happening. So we're going to launch our fourth vehicle uh, uh, in January next year. And we have six more planned for next year. Uh, we're starting to also do uh, the data center, the edge computing, the, the validation of hosted payloads, the satellite for rent. So we, we have um, ways to configure the satellite, so software-defined satellite, so to speak, that you can play with 
uh, we can uh, allow you to play with and test your technologies, test your algorithms, even provide you imagery because we have components on board that provide you that. Um, so if you want to test your application even before you think about developing your, your, your payload and uh, talk to us. Um, and we can also use it to, you know, as a, a satellite zero of a constellation, uh, relay of communications and so on and so forth. Um, looking forward into the future, I'm, I don't have a slide for that, but uh, it's looking into obviously in orbit manufacturing, um, um, uh, the, the moon, moon and asteroid range. So this is lunar, we're looking into constellations uh, and deploying constellations to the moon for two things. One is obviously communications to the far side. So you see the, the pictures that EASE is putting out with this moon village and uh, the Artemis Accords. We're now looking at how to deliver payloads, not just to the moon surface, there's a lot of companies looking into that, but to the moon orbit and to lunar orbit. So basically how to deploy a constellation that will allow you, for instance, to do GNSS on the moon. Um, so these things are happening. Um, and, uh, uh, and as I said, I'm proud of people, I'm proud of, proud of to be Portuguese and proud to be in Lisbon, but at the same time, um, as I mentioned, um, just feel free to reach out. If, you, if, you, if you're not doing exactly that in Portugal, we're probably doing it within the group uh, and we're more than happy to uh, work, allow you to work remotely or work from Portugal and, 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 and make the, the best out of it. Final, final thoughts. Um, and, um, this is counterintuitive when you think about the orbit being a space logistics company, but uh, I'm, I'm, this is a very personal to me is that we, we have uh, the, and a requirement to use space uh, sustainably and efficiently. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be really, really crowded and really, really hard to do anything up there. So if you're planning for your applications, uh, I mean, I'm all happy to, 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 for you to pay me to send stuff up there, but please consider two things. One is, is the application really... Mm, the only way to do it is it from space. Can we do it with drones? Can you do it with balloons? Can you do it with ships? I don't know. So ask yourself those questions, but also validate technology. So don't just send satellites to validate technology. Send the payload to validate the technology. Send the host, you know, we'll host it for you. Will be will be much cheaper for you. And we also not add to the debris problem because I mean we will have the satellite in orbit anyway. So just make use of that. Uh, and then uh, this is for, for a longer term planning. I mean, if you're planning a solution that includes more, more than one satellite, even one satellite, just go beyond the regulations to clean up, your, clean up after yourself. So basically today we have the situation where you uh, launch a satellite and uh, the, 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 typically the, the, the third stage and some of the fairing elements are gonna stay in orbit. And it's basically like, you know, you, you, you're going on a motorway, you're going, you, you're driving on, on, on your left lane and 120 kilometers per hour and your car breaks down and you just leave it there and, and it's, it, does, it doesn't work. So you need to two things. One, just try to at least move it to the curb. And then we're working on uh, to be the, um, to help you out with the, with the tow truck. So we will also provide those kind of services. Um, final remark, and this is, this is for general, uh, um, general topic, um, which is also very dear to me, particularly in the Portuguese ecosystem, is that the, just don't reinvent the wheel. So focus on what's the added value, focus on what's the difference, what differences you from everybody else. Um, I'm showing this because this is a descent. This is something that uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's those little red dots that are, we have flying eight at each corner of our, of our CubeSat, of our um, deployer. So the, the, the CubeSat is going there. The three, this is uh, 48 EU capability, which different configurations. But these sense we have eight at each of the corner of the, of the satellites. And these, these things can act, but they have the magnetometers, they have the reaction wheels, they have everything in there that requires you to, to operate a satellite from a sensing perspective, so that you will then obviously actuate on it. But that camera doubles off as a star tracker, as a sun sensor, as, a, as an Earth, uh, picture so that picture of the Iberian Peninsula was taken with one of these. Uh, it can it can record videos, it can record pictures, and it can do a lot of stuff. And it's uh, it's a component that you know it's all, it's off the shelf. It's there. So start thinking about uh, adding value to this. So what would you do if I if you have these capabilities instead of trying to just make a new one? Uh, it's 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 fun. It's a lot of fun to make a new one, but it's not going to be sustainable in the long term. And that's me, Kui, sorry. 
Thank you very much, Bruno. All this very insightful stuff. Uh, I think you 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 point out an important thing is that, uh, I mean, what was the industry twenty years ago when we when we enroll at ESA, where we were, were all rookies just trying to to learn things, and now we have the twenty years have passed, and now we are the mature companies, and this is a very competitive branch. So you have to focus, you have to do things that matter, you have to understand how the business work and, and how to go forward. And it's excellent to, to hear you uh, talk about that. Just uh, to, 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 to not just to be um, all presentations in a row, just let me ask you, because I mean, the orbit, I think is an interesting uh, example of, I mean, and we've seen more and more investment from outside coming to Portugal. So I think that is becoming a trend at the moment. Uh, you will see uh, the rocket factory with partnerships. We see Leo Labs. You see the orbit that is coming, a GMV, and uh, and Amos, of course, were, were already here for some time. But in terms for the orbit, I mean, for the whole countries that you have chosen, why uh, did you choose to have an operation center here in Portugal? I mean, what was the differentiation factors? Uh, what is your take on that? Well, two, two things. I mean, the orbit has been here, for, as I said, from in Portugal since uh, 2014. It was incorporated in Italy in 2011, so the years after the incorporation, it, uh, the founders decided to come to Portugal. Um, it was not a fluke in the sense that it was not by accident, although obviously they leveraged the, as I said, the, 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 the contest that was opened by MIT Portugal and Caixa Capital, uh, but funding was an element. So the, the fact that the, they had access to the, the, I think 200K at the time for, from Caixa Capital was very, 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 very relevant from a startup perspective. So we're not coming as, um, or on the direct investment like RFA or, or Leo Labs, it's a slightly different approach. Uh, we were a startup at the time and we, we are not a startup anymore. I mean, the orbit is now uh, 160 people. I think that's the, the mark today. Uh, the 1st of October, we had four more people joining and I think we just passed that mark. Um, and we grown the team, you know, last, last year, about the same time last year, we were about 70. So we, we're doubling the team um, significantly. And that's, a, and again, across the different countries. So when I joined the orbit in Portugal, we were about four, we're now eight, and I'm still hoping to be 15 by the end of this year alone. Um, so so the, 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 there's two things. One is obviously human resources. I mean, we, 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 we don't like the term human resources. Uh, Christy would kill me, but so it's just all people. Um, good people, and and, uh, and, uh, and and the thing is that we do have an excellent uh, um, excellent uh, students, excellent uh, engineering uh, uh, schools, and we do leverage that a lot. So we work a lot with the Institute of Geotechnic, with the uh, Movie, with the uh, Mean. Uh, we, we, we give challenges to those students. We work with, um, uh, we develop thesis together. So actually, the, the satellite operator that is currently uh, working with us, he did his thesis together on conjunction analysis for um, the orbital debris, uh, the uh, orbital debris, which is then a tool that is in now included in our in our, our our control suite, which is among other things, predicts um, if and when uh, conjunction will occur, so that we can take uh, evasive evasive action if, if required. We are also deploying satellites, so we need to know if we are deploying them in a safe manner in in, a, in an area that's not crowded. Uh, and uh, Jean Silva, the, who lives in, in Ming in the middle of in the middle of Portugal, is operating with satellites from his laptop in, in, in Portugal, um, and, and the satellites are you know everywhere. So I think the 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 the, the other element I should point out is that we are indeed operating in a global environment. So I'm not worried about nationalities. I'm the, the, I had a fun fact. I mean, I have. I'm working with the um, Italian people live, that live in Portugal, that they were living in Spain. Um, the Portuguese people that are moving to Italy. We have British um, um, and U.S. nationalities uh, living in Italy or in or in, or in the U.K. So we we Spanish. But we have all nationalities in Europe. I think uh, I don't think I think we cover most of the countries in terms of nationalities, and that's a very very important asset for us. So that, that diversity is really important. And, uh, and uh, I mean, Portugal needs to also leverage that because we learn a lot. I mean, the Portuguese team is learning a lot with, with, with not just technically, but also culturally and, and how to um, engage into a, a multicultural environment. And that's very important. Excellent, Prun. Thank you very much.
Just a, a question to Elder, so that uh, maybe he has to leave a little bit early. I don't want to leave him uh, without uh, saying anything else. I mean, what we yes. are discussing now, I mean, uh, we are looking at uh, the ability to attract foreign direct investment, the ability to attract uh, startups. So I wanted to ask in our ability to attract international human resources to our companies. I know the reason that we are all talking here in English. No, the panel is 100% uh, Portuguese, but that's because we have a lot of the international uh, students uh, enroll at AED careers. So clearly, you know, coming back to Portugal, I mean, everyone knows we have excellent beaches, excellent weather, excellent food. And of course, that is a, 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 a good, uh, an excellent uh, draw card. But uh, in terms of companies, I mean, are we prepared to do for that international environments within our companies? Uh, I mean, Edisoft is part of a, a, a big group, Talish. How do you see that in terms of the people, international people that are here, in terms of their ability to come here and to work within the Portuguese environment? Yes, yeah, so I've been involved with with this project since 1999. So I've been already working with a lot a lot of nationalities, and also in, inside of Edisoft, I, I record uh, being working with the Congolese and also from a person from Bosnia. Uh, also, in inside of Talis, as you, you said, uh, there are a lot of uh, support uh, between each other. So uh, we are working in a multicultural, multi-international uh, 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 environment. Uh, the, the last experience that, that I had, it, it, was, it was quite nice. It, it, it was to work with the South Korean, that is a um, um, very different way of, uh, of working uh, than uh, as uh, Europeans. And uh, with that, we, we try to adapt our ways of, of, of working because, for example, they are more, more focused on doing things. Uh, we are more focused initially to plan the things. Uh, they do not plan. They just go uh, directly to do the bootloader of, of, the, of the satellite, for example. So uh, you have to adapt yourself and uh, to, 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 to learn and to work differently. Even sometimes it is not very comfortable to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Excellent, Anna. Great answer. Uh, now we go to Francisco. I think uh, Francisco the, is, the, is being accumulating uh, job, uh, <laughs> job titles. He is now also the CEO from Geosat is a strategy lead at uh, Omnidea. And I think it's a good example of uh, uh, the development that the ecosystem has been having. I mean, there has been a lot of uh, investment, uh, uh, both institutional with the, with the creation of the Portuguese space agency. So a lot of attention of the sector, a lot of investment. And I think Geosat, uh, um, Geosat is one good example of how Portugal is climbing up the ladder and Francisco, please let us uh, know a little bit about that initiative and how do you, you plan of going forward with it. Thank you, Francisco, for coming. Thank you, Rui, very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, as uh, Rui was saying, uh, Geosat is a new, newly created company, well, from 2021, to become the first satellite operator in Portugal through the acquisition of two satellites that were already orbiting the Earth. Uh, and as we said, I was, well, I've been uh, through some companies in the industry, but in fact, uh, Geosat stems from a global investment, uh, well, uh, not global, but uh, general, an investment from different companies here in Portugal that decided to take a leap forward in the aerospace industry and uh, stop waiting to develop their own satellites to start operating them and to develop and establish an operator from the start. So what's Geosat? So just for you to briefly understand, as we told you, uh, we own and operate two satellites, a wide coverage one and a very high resolution one. This is important for the business model because we can decide what images to take and when to take them and from which part of the world. Uh, we provide imagery throughout the world to the five continents. Uh, we are one of the two very high resolution optical data providers. What does this mean? It means that there are two entities in Europe that are able to get images, optical images, with less than one meter resolution. It's Airbus and the other one, it's us, it's Geosat. 
uh, we have also unrestrained access to the market. So we do not limit ourselves to a specific area of the globe, to a specific vertical market. We tackle the entire globe and well, the majority of vertical mar markets that can be served through Earth observation. We deploy a team that together has more than 11 years uh, operating these satellites and uh, processing this imagery. We'll talk slightly more about that. And we have a huge archive, one of the largest in the industry uh, that allows us to have an extensive uh, set, uh, extensive sets of data to perform analytics, for instance, to develop algorithms and so on. Um, our idea is just to briefly present you what's Geosat, what do we do, what type of activities are we enrolled in, and then following who is uh, challenge, just to explain to you what are our challenges for the future and what type of capabilities do we need, and for sure, uh, some of them might be covered by people like you. So as I told you, Geosat, it's an investment from Omnidea. Portuguese is a private group working in space for 20 years. Um, well, mostly on space propulsion, but also in many other air, aerospace and energy areas. Say it's an engineering center up north that uh, brings together around 300 engineers. It provides a, a very good capability enhancement for the analytics, for data science uh, uh, part of the business. And then the Air Center. Air Center is an international network of Atlantic users, uh, which is based in Portugal. And this provides us also an important market channel to access the Atlantic users. So executive team, just to give you an idea of what it takes to operate a satellite. So you need management for sure, you need people. People are very critical. In the end, it comes down to, do you have the people you need to be in the business or not? Uh, you need a very strong commercial uh, footprint, innovation, because on the, uh, well, not on the contrary, but what we are seeing is that uh, innovation in space nowadays looks more like innovation in IT. We are requested to innovate uh, every year to present new things, new types of services, because if not, the, the competition will do it. And of course, you need the people to operate the satellites and of course, to process the image and deliver the product. It's interesting because you also need experience and you need to bring in people with different views. We have a non-executive board in which we have the uh, shareholders of the, of the companies, uh, the Portuguese ones, but also here, for instance, Miguel Bello, the founder of the Demus Group, uh, which was the one developing these satellites, which is now part of our board, and also uh, one of the persons which has, well, more experience in working in this uh, area for the past decades. And uh, quite new acquisition, it's uh, one of the founders or of uh, the most recent Portuguese unicorn, Fidzai, Nuno Special, is also is also on board. It helps us to bring this view, this market view, this perspective of uh, businesses that are, that are not institutional to our business. And so it's important to bring in these different views and to build on what they can, uh, what they can bring and on their complementarity. The satellite is for you to have an idea. This is most like a small dishwasher in terms of size, this is 60 centimeters. It's the white coverage. It's good for agriculture, environment, and a lot of other things. This is the type of imagery you can get out of it. This is the other one. It's the workhorse, the very high resolution one. It allows us to have, for now, images at 75 centimeter resolution. Um, and it orbits a day in uh, allowing for two to three day revisits. It means that every two to three days, we have images from the same places, depend on the areas. Sometimes we have images every day, but it depends on, on the operation. This is the type of images we can get with these satellites. We also have the important part of getting these images to the customers, the toolkits that allow you to deliver the images directly into the operational uh, chains of your customers. And also, well, this is an antenna to allow, allow us some independence in the access to the, to the satellites. In terms of products and services, very briefly, this is, well, you know, Manhattan, this is type of, type of uh, images that uh, we can provide, but the important part is not to have a nice image, is what you can do with images. For instance, for land registry, to understand what's the exact division between the parcels, what's the new construction in the previous month, in the previous years, What's the real map of that city at a certain point? That's something important that we can also provide and we are already providing to a large number of countries in Europe. Also agriculture and forestry, you know, it's very critical food security. Are, can, are we producing and taking the food where it is more needed or not? So every year our satellites 
provide imagery to farmers, to governments, to institutions to understand what is happening uh, in this domain. Also, fires, unfortunately, uh, sad reality of our country as well. We can understand what was the area that which was burned, which, what was that area, why this gold field was say that was saved from the images. So a lot of information that in fact we can extract and have a direct calculation of these and damages and so on. Environmental monitoring, very important. As you know, this is the Thames in London. And for instance, is just to give you a more recent highlight, the recent oil spill uh, in Syria with optical imagery. You can also help uh, environmental agencies to understand what is happening. Emergency management, this is the floods in Germany where here you can see the streets and then covered with clay and water from the recent floods we had in uh, last month. Also understand how much are we taking out of a mine and what type of uh, ships we can identify and what are they doing. And of course, if you if you like tech, you'll know that this is the April Park and then following its construction throughout the, the month that preceded its conclusion. Just on strategy to share a little bit with you. Um, main issue is getting this, uh, getting a larger footprint in the market. With uh, satellite satellites go everywhere, everywhere around the world. So our market is a global market. Uh, then new products and services. We see analytics being discussed every day. But what does this mean? It means that you are able to automatically identify a vessel, an airplane. Now, what vessel it is? what airplane it is, if it was registered, if it wasn't registered, you can identify what's new construction, what's the new height of constructions. You can do a lot of things more and more automatically. Having the people doing the quality check and then thinking about new applications for the data. And finally, also very interesting is looking, preparing what comes after these satellites that hopefully will continue to operate for uh, five plus years. Uh, and we are right now starting to prepare what comes next. I'll tell you more about this in one or two slides. Just challenges and needs. What do we need? And hopefully, what in what can you help us? Just first for you to understand, this is Geosat, okay? This is uh, some of the criteria that we consider important to the service we provide. Here is the big companies that are, well, and the majority of the share of the market. And here in yellow, the institutional programs like Copernicus. We like to present ourselves, and this is the goal of this uh, picture, as a balanced solution, a well-rounded EO solution. What happens is that the market will grow institutionally and also in the private side. And what we know is that the private customer will not want to pay premium prices for the data. But at the same time, they will require more and more robust and trustworthy data. So that's what we are providing them. It's robust and trustworthy data at an affordable price. And so to do this, we have these satellites and we are starting to prepare the next generation satellite. Yesterday, we delivered one of the, well, several tenths of proposals that were submitted to the Portuguese Resilience and Recovery Plan to develop the next generation of our satellites. And so to have a seamless uh, operation, just replacing one satellite by the others. And we also need help to do this. In terms of challenges, um, we see this, so everyone talks about new space, but in practical terms for our business, it means that we need to look at space, not just from the robustness standpoint, that is very characteristic of space because you cannot go up there to orbit and fix something that you missed in the first place, but you need to bring the speed and the, the agility of other sectors. You need to get the IT mindset coming here, both for the development of the satellites and the systems, and also for the services, because the customer is used more and more to have this the, this continuous continuous development, continuous innovation. And so we need to provide them this because our customers are doing that and are starting to do that. So, and then we need to be ready to well, this volat volatile and certain complex and ambiguous uh, context in which we are and start anticipating the future. We are in the beginning of our observation market or space-based observation market. As we, we saw happening with drones, in which the applications that now drive revenue, some of them were not foreseen uh, 10, 20 years ago when we started talking about drones, it will happen the same. And we need to be prepared to provide new applications, new takes on data. Uh, how do I serve this customer that has a very specific need? And how do I tailor my offer to them? So we need to think 
we need to think a lot, a lot mostly. Then, as Bruno was saying, I, I like that the idea that you don't need to reinvent the wheel. So get the partners that are good at that or at what they are doing and bring them on board. So and then you build on top of that with what you are good on. And so you need strong partnerships. The market is very large, fortunately. So we can grow and we can grow together. And finally, having this value selling approach. It doesn't fit the issue where you are selling an image and they say, how much discount do you give me? It's $1, $2. If we go on images, we'll go like this. If we are able to understand the benefit that Earth observation brings to our customers' value, value chains, then we can say to them, look, I'm bringing you 100 million revenue. I'm not additional revenue. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for a small part of that. And it changes the approach uh, to business. And just finally, what does it take to run a business like this? Like the other saying, it takes, a, it takes a village almost. You need a lot of people with a lot of different capabilities. So on operations, we need the people that are flight and ground segment engineers. So aerospace engineers, like many of us, to do what Bruno was saying, to get the alerts uh, on the collisions and understand what we need to do and to decide and provide us with advice on that, to develop the next generation of the satellites. Ground segment engineers that plan the entire operation of the satellite, satellite operators that need to know if the satellite is working well need to be aware of the early warning signs that we might have a problem with the satellite what we need to do understand how we can improve the operation of the satellite and of course software developers this is more it's almost like a joke but software developers are in every area and you understand why because we need new front ends new toolkits on the products and services you need to be able to validate the images you need to be able to have people that understand how what's there actually besides the picture that most of us can see, uh, what information they can extract, how they can extract information, work with the data scientists to look at that in a broader perspective, and also with software developers to auto make automatic whatever we can make automatic and leave people for the most creative part of the business. In innovation, commercial and marketing, we are, we, well, marketing, it's, all, it's almost funny to talk about that because Right now, it's, uh, it, it went on from something that we didn't even, even need to consider because images sold by themselves to a critical part of our business. We need to be able to explain our customers in the market what value do we have. It's not just a pretty picture. It's what are we adding, what are we bringing to you? So right now, it's something that is very critical. And it's not just managing uh, publications in so posts in social network, or something like that. It's actually thinking about how can we present the business to our customer and the value that we think we can provide to our customer? Of course, you need come people that uh, key account managers, people that work with the customer and are there day, day in, day out, understanding what are you using our data for? How can we help you more? What else do we need? And how, what can we do for you? This customer centric, centric approach is very critical. And of course, you need people that think that what else can we do? And also in management, the most well, where I am actually, where most of us are, but we also need a lot of creativity and agility there. We need an agile management that is able to tackle the challenges and to adapt to the different uh, frameworks. We, you need people and you need capability to attract and retain the best people and understand that sometimes they are leaving. That's just part of the deal. And you just need to make sure that they have had a good experience. You have, you have been able to take the... Uh, to have them to uh, provide the best value they could for the company and well and accept that and of course legal expertise you are selling throughout the world we engineers usually we think ourselves as almost lawyers that we can review contracts and non-disclosure agreements and so on but we can't and if we are talking about global business this is something that we need to cover so it was great to explain you this you have my direct contacts i'll be pleased to pass you on to the relevant people in the company uh, and to further discuss the challenges that are many and very interesting. Thank you. Excellent, Francisco. Thank you very much. I think this is, a, I mean, it's a very exciting project. And as I mentioned, I mean, it really shows uh, the, the high level that we have reached within the, the space industry here in Portugal. So I had a, a couple of uh, questions for you. Uh, but uh, I think we are very out of time, uh, so um, um, we'll keep this uh, this discussion uh, for other time. So, but the contacts are here. I think it's clear. I mean, we we do very interesting things in Portugal throughout the the, the life cycle of the products, other upstream, midstream, downstream. 
So space is now uh, an excellent uh, an excellent time to get on board. There's a lot of investment. There's a lot of interest, and so I think it's uh, uh, it's clear for everyone that uh, it's a, it's a good bet. So I would like to thank the panel. In the meanwhile, Livu and uh, Elder had to leave, but uh, thank you uh, again for 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 participating on the discussion, and we will keep in touch. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye. And so in a couple we will in a couple just a one minute go to the next workshop. Thank you very much.